started, here's the straight up guitar sound. I'm using the USA Lead mid gain amplifier based around the Mesa Mark IV with lots of gain and lots of delay. There's also a wire on there as well. <laughs> Pretty glorious, right? What we wanna do next is I wanna generate a tone using the synth block. Then I wanna add harmonies to that tone using the pitch block. And then we'll do a little bit of post-processing to just kinda of fatten and sweeten those chords so they sound a little bit more kinda of like a nice sweet synth pad. So let's do that. Let's run a parallel chain down here. And I'm only gonna use a couple of blocks just to kinda of keep this simple. You can experiment with this yourself. Let's start with a synth block and we want to generate that tone first. So essentially the synth block is like having three different oscillators. You can set the shape, you can set the frequency and a bunch of other parameters like filtering and panning. So I'm going to bring the level down on this and let's set the frequency for voice one to that 110 hertz, that A note. Now nothing's happening at the moment, but if I set the tracking to off, I get an A note. Uh, it doesn't sound particularly inspiring at the moment, but we'll work with that. So what I like to do is use all three voices here, and I'm actually gonna throw this A note down a further octave. So I'll halve it so we get a 55 hertz tone. Let's hear that. And I'm gonna set the type to be a sawtooth. So let's do that. Alrighty, that's kind of sounding uh, a little bit better at the moment. Let's use the other two voices though, and I'll set those to that original frequency of 110 hertz. But I'm gonna pan them hard left and hard right. So this one can go left, this one can go right. And I am also gonna set the type to sawtooth on both of them. So we've basically got three saws, a really low one, and then two lower ones pan hard left and hard right. And I can kind of just slightly detune the left and right voices. This is gonna make it sound a little bit wider and fatter sounding. All right, let's do this. If I set the tracking on all of them off, That immediately sounds way better. It's kind of got a little bit of that Moog Taurus thing that I love so much about those 70s Rush records. Okay, we're generating a tone. What we wanna do now is we can do one of two things. We can use the channels in the synth block to play different tones. For example, if I wanted to generate like a low A, a low F and a low D and play over that in A minor, I could do that. Or I could just generate these really low A's and I could use a pitch block to kind of re-pitch them and retune them. Personally, I like having the option of just having the single notes in there and then blending in different pitch block harmonies. So I'm gonna do that. So what we're gonna do is very quickly copy channel A in the synth block to the other, well, not the other two, but we're gonna copy channel A to channel B and channel C. So we're actually gonna generate three notes here. Let's go to channel B, the notes that I want are gonna be, like I said, an F. And my notes here tell me that an F is 87.31 hertz. That's kind of sufficiently low. I might just set all three of them to that particular note. We'll have a listen to this in one second. So now we have a big fat low F. And channel C, I'm gonna to set to a low D, which my notes tell me is 73.42 hertz. Now you can see that this is kind of the long way around, but I do like having that kind of taurus -y style bass note as an option if I turn the pitch block off. But what you could do is just generate that A and then use different channels in the pitch block to give you different harmonies. We'll get to that in a second though. So now I'm gonna have this lovely low D. And I mean, if you wanted to, you could just stop at this. These sound pretty good. So what I'll do is I'll set channel A to scene one. So I'm gonna save that there. And I'll actually just leave it off for now because I wanna be able to talk over the drum. As you can see, channel B is assigned to scene two. That's good, I'll leave that on. So you can see that I was already playing around with this for a little bit before where I've actually got those three notes mapped to those three scenes. We could go in and name that. Okay, what I wanna do now is turn these into chords. So we've done our basic setup. Let's use a pitch block and we're gonna use the quad harmony setting. This will let us generate four notes. 
that are in a diatonic key, meaning if I want this to all be in A minor, which I do, so let's set that the key to A and the scale to Aeolian minor. Uh, that's kind of going to cover us there. Then what I can do is go, okay, cool. Well, I've got that low A. What do I want uh, in terms of harmony? I'd like a third and a fifth to play a basic A minor chord, but I'd like them to be pitched higher. So I wouldn't mind kind of like an octave in there as well. So let's do this. Let's set voice three to be an octave higher. So that is the eighth note of the minor scale. Voice four, I want this to be the fifth. So I just kind of set that to five. This is all good so far. And then I want a minor third in the highest voice. So this kind of piano style voicing. Now, rather than into three here, I want to play it in the next octave. So that's actually a, the interval of a tenth. And if all of this kind of sounds like a different language, um, you're on YouTube. Go and learn some basics about musical intervals. It will make your whole life a little bit clearer and less miserable. And uh, it's, I mean, it's going to be handy to dial in the synth tones any way you like them as well. Anyway, I've set harmony one and harmony two uh, to be that higher minor third voice because I want to pan them hard left and hard right and also detune them just a little bit. Again, we're further thickening the sound. What I'm also going to do is under master and mod, I'm going to set the input mode to stereo because my main synth voices had some voices panned left and right. So this is all going to sound really wide and stereo. Alrighty, let's do this. I'm going to uh, turn the pitch block off. I'm going to engage that low A note and then I'm going to kick the pitch block in so we can hear this gorgeous fat A minor chord. Awesome. That feels so nice to play over and it sounds thick and rich and kind of like an old 70s analog synth or something like that. Of course, you can use this to generate any type of chord because the pitch block lets us set not only the key, but the type of scale. We have so many choices. We can even program custom scales. If you haven't watched my video on custom scales on the Axe FX3 or the FM3, go and check it out. You can do some wild stuff with it. Okay, so we've got that. That's really cool. What I want to do though is I'm just going to leave these harmonies as they are. So in scene two and scene three, I want to leave the pitch block on the same channel because if you remember on scene two, I'm feeding an F note into this, which is in the key of A minor. So the quad harmony is going to say, hey, that's an F. I know what all the extra notes in that chord should be according to these intervals that I've laid out. Uh, let's see if it does it. Uh, I'm actually going to engage the synth on this then I'm going to change the scene to using the physical switches here. What a glorious thing. Now, we could take that next level and say on that third chord, which would be playing a D minor at the moment, maybe what I'll do, I'll do something kind of cheeky. I'm going to change on scene three the pitch block channel as well. Rather, it generate a harmony from A minor, which would give me a D minor chord in the fourth chord. I want it to give me a D major. So I'm going to go into this and I'm going to copy channel A uh, let's copy it to channel C just so it kind of lines up with the rest of the synth block. And I'm going to set channel C rather than the scale be A minor, I'm going to set it to A Dorian, which is right here. So when I change over to scene three, it's going to play a D major chord for me rather than a D minor chord. Because of course, if we're playing A Dorian, the four chord is major rather than minor from a natural minor. All right, let's hear it.
wonderful stuff. Let's just kind of sweeten that synth tone up a little bit more. I wouldn't mind like a reverb or a time-based effect at the end there. Uh, let's go with the plex delay. I don't know, the plex verb. That's one of my favorite effects in here. Let's hear that. That kind of adds a nice big Blade Runner style ambience on there. So I'll save that. And I mean, maybe let's just add kind of like a filter block doing a very basic little sweep. I mean, we could use a wah block in there if we wanted to, uh, but I'll go for like a low pass filter, something kind of basic. So let's do that. We'll put a filter block in here. Wonderful stuff. And let's set it to be a low pass. And I want this to just kind of sweep around from uh, maybe 500 hertz to around 5K. So we'll just attach an LFO to that there. And I've got the, what type of LFO do I have in here? Just a sine wave sweep there. Kind of a slow rate because I don't want it to swoosh up and down too fast. I'll engage that and I'll hit save. And you can see we're at around kind of 80% on here, uh, which is kind of right around where I wouldn't want to add too many more time-based effects on something like this. Anyway, let's just set the modifier minimum and maximum. So it's around 500 and like I said, somewhere around 5K. This will give me a nice kind of sweep. Uh, let's engage the synth block. I'm going to save this and then I'll do some playing over these chords. <laughs> So much fun, you can get so creative with this. If you wanted to, instead of using the quad harmony, you could use the arpeggiator in the pitch block to generate a sequence. You could use different post effects like the parametric EQ, the flanges, the choruses, uh, kind of anything that you want to use to get that synth sound the way you like it. I like the plex reverb and that filter for a kind of faux Blade Runner atmosphere in there with this lead guitar, uh, but by all means, go to town on it. If you have any questions you would like me to address that I didn't cover while I was going through the video, let me know in the comments. Or if you've used this trick and you've tried it, how do you like to use it? What sort of context do you like? What sort of chords do you like to generate? What post effects do you like on there? Let me know because I'm always looking out for new ideas with these kind of things. Until next time, stay safe, be good to one another. I'll see you next time.